Today, uh, <clears throat> many, many people around the nation are watching the news reports about the Boston bombings uh, that happened at the Marathon uh, in Boston, Massachusetts yesterday. And uh, we certainly, I just wanted to real quick make a short video here regarding that uh, to one, be in prayer for those people, uh, especially the victims, the families, and uh, you know, being myself, I in 2004 I narrowly escaped a suicide bomber in Israel. I certainly can understand what the people go through, what they'll go through afterwards. Um, Israel, naturally, as many of you know, are, are, are no strangers to suicide bombings. When I lived there, um, it was during the time of the Intifada, uh, where the Palestinians were uh, on a regular basis doing suicide bombings in Israel. Uh, we had quite a few number of suicide bombings when I lived there. Of course, tourism was at an all-time low. Practically no one came to the country during that time. Um, it, it changes you, though. It, it makes you think a lot different, and, and it takes time to um, for those things to kind of subside in your mind and, and not be right there uh, always affecting you, I might say. Uh, anyway, I thought I might share that story with you. I know I write about it in the book, uh, uh, Yam Suf, as well as the book Israel, Are They Still God's People? Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever actually given the testimony on video before or not, but I thought I would take that time just to share with you what happened on that day in uh, September 22nd, 2004. Um, I, I lived in Jerusalem at the time. When I first went to Israel, I lived in Tel Aviv. Then I lived on uh, a kibbutz. Um, uh, south of Tel Aviv and I finally moved to Jerusalem because I didn't like it in Tel Aviv it's, uh, it's, it's a beautiful city as far as on the water and stuff but I just didn't like you know the way it, the, the worldliness of it I should say so I took the time and uh, looked for a house in Jerusalem moved up there and uh, ironically I moved in right across the street from Gershon Solomon and lived near a place what we call Fridge Hills, where actually where the uh, University of Jerusalem is. It's right right around the corner from where I lived at. And there's a little national forest where I lived at, and the bus stop uh, there at that intersection, I uh, forget the name of the street there, but uh, it was prone to suicide bombings. In fact, it had been the most suicide bombings for a bus stop was there where, where, where I lived at. And um, one, one uh, I don't remember if it was late morning or mid-afternoon, I forget exactly. I want to say it was mid-afternoon, but I, I just don't recall now. But uh, I went to go to pray. Uh, I like to pray there in the woods there, as well as many other Orthodox Jews that you would find there. We have all, everybody seemed to have their own little place there. You know, you, you wander through the woods a little ways, though, and you'd run into another Jewish person there praying. And... Um, and uh, which also brings back another memory I remember um, one of the brothers there as I was coming through the woods there I heard him crying out after the suicide bombing that had just been done in Bathsheba as a, as a bus bombing and he was saying uh, to the Lord Kol Hasman Adonai Kol Hasman how much longer Lord um, you know so we don't always just, you know, a lot of times people think of Jews praying just prayers that are written in books, but uh, we do pray just right out from our heart as well. But anyway, I was going down the, um, the road, and as I come in, there were two ways you could go to the place I like to go to in this particular little, it's called a national forest, but you know, it's really not that big. It's like the size of just a big park is what it's like. Uh, we have planted little pines in there. They're short. They're not very tall. Probably about 15 foot tall is all they grow to be, uh, or at least in this particular forest. Uh, the little ibex, uh, kind of like a mountain goat, quite a few of them were in this particular place. And I used to like to kind of slip in there and see them, you know, and uh, slip up on them and, and get to see them. Very skittish creatures. But anyhow, uh, I didn't like going... Uh, there was a rough terrain, a little rough road that you could get in there that would go down into the valley, but it was very steep. And if you ever did any mountain climbing, things like that, you know, when you're going down a steep hill, it can be very rough on the shins uh, walking. And, and I used to try to avoid that if I followed the main road, which went right uh, 
just uh, well there actually is two bus stops there we go past one bus stop but then parallel to the other bus stop um, and that's of course where she was coming to uh, there were uh, a couple of Palestinian guys dropped off this girl and she was walking down the sidewalk um, and I had not realized that uh, that she was coming uh, you know there's always people on the sidewalk you don't really pay attention to that but as I was as I was coming towards the intersection where I would go at, the next thing I know, I'm, I'm on the phone talking to a friend back in the United States, and I saw myself starting down that hill that I did not want to go. And I didn't realize, as the Bible says, the footsteps of the righteous are order of the Lord. I didn't know that God was trying to order my steps away from this girl that was fixing to be dropped off. Now, she had not been dropped off as of yet. We were just seconds from that happening. And a thought come to my mind said, you idiot, why are you going this way? And I thought, that's right, I hate this way. So I turned around, not knowing that that was Satan. You know, he had this plan for me, but uh, I didn't realize that he had something planned and God was planning to make sure I, uh, I avoided this. So I turned around and I go back right where I left off, turn and I started down the sidewalk there. And just moments after I started on that sidewalk is when she was dropped off on the sidewalk as well. And, um, but anyway, I took and um, as I started down there, another thought come to my mind. And that thought was, if you go this way, you will get in that intersection and you have one more phone call to make and you'll turn your back to the wind because we have westerly winds that blow at that time of year. And uh, it's every day like that, and people would always complain, I can't hear you, you know, and there's the wind blowing in the phone. So I would, I would turn my back if I was on the phone, and I would stand there. And then the voice that spoke in my heart said, you'll stay there and you won't leave. And in essence, what that was going to do was to take and face me. She was on the opposite side of the street, but it was going to take and turn me and face me directly at her as she was coming down. And... Um, so I stopped and I said, well, fine, I'll just go down the hill then, you know, even though I knew I hated it, I just said that, you know, and not knowing that this battle is going on, you know, the, the Holy Spirit warning me, but not outright saying it, and then Satan trying to drag me back to where she was coming from. And so I turned around and I walked back, and as I started down the hill, and you have to keep in mind, the two routes are actually parallel one to another. The only difference is by going down the steep hill, it puts the, there's a little short wall there, but it also, the mountainside, kind of puts the mountain to shield from where this girl was going to blow herself up at. She's 18 years old, and I've often wondered about this young lady. You know, was she coerced into doing this? Uh, was it just from the, the, the struggles of life? You know, what was it? What went through her mind, you know, that brought her to this place? Um, but nonetheless... I started back down the hill, and as I started down that hill, she had already been dropped off, and she was coming down the sidewalk. So no doubt, as I was coming back, she was coming, you know, we, we crossed in path, uh, basically. Even though we're, we, of course, opposite side of the road there, but, you know, it's not that, you know, just a few meters is all. And, you know, we, we pass our, we cross our paths, and she's coming down, I'm going down, now I'm going down the hill, and then she ignited herself. Two of the guards, there were two... Um, uh, Jewish guards there, both, both young men, if I'm not mistaken, were um, Ethiopian Jews. And they realized what she was up to, and they tried to intercept her, and she blew herself up. She didn't make it quite to the bus stop. The blast itself, me still being as close as I was, and yet down below, I still was nearly knocked off my feet from the concussion. And, uh, and I knew then, and I was, and what, oddly enough, I was actually on the second phone call when the blast went off, proving as the Spirit of God that spoke to my heart, that warned me that I had another phone call to make and I wouldn't leave, that I would have been there. The pole that I would stand by is that when I went back up uh, was just tore up with shrapnel. So I realized had, whether, whether I would have been killed in the blast, whether I would have been injured in the blast, nonetheless, you know, God knew that he had to get me out of the way of this, this lady here. And um, my heart uh, is saddened, though, by the loss of the two soldiers. 
Uh, many other people were injured, though. Uh, there were people that were further away than I was. It's kind of like a, uh, the intersection is just not like a, a four-way. It's like a six-way intersection, different roads coming together there. And uh, on, a, on a corner further than what I was, eight people were wounded. Um, it's just unbelievable. But anyway, my heart's prayers uh, do go out to the people of Boston, Massachusetts, the loved ones, and no doubt the different people from around the world that were there. Um, I can understand and I know what you'll go through for years to come. Uh, it, it changes you. It makes you think differently about things. And I think of also of my Israeli brothers and sisters that as well have either escaped, were wounded, maimed um, from acts of terror around the world. But uh, it only speaks that there is a time coming when... God will deliver us, and not only the Jews, but as well as the Christians as well. And there will be a millennium, uh, a time of peace that will come upon the earth. We look forward to that day, and that we no longer have to be bound down with these things. God bless you. May you have a great day. May you live every day knowing it could be your last, but you don't want to live it in gloom like that, but you know, I guess maybe I should say in this regard here, tell someone you love them today. And appreciate every moment that you have. And make sure your relationship with the God of all the heavens and earth is in its right place. Remember, our thoughts are louder in heaven than our voices are on this earth. You know, let's pray unless really seeking for the hour is nigh at hand. God bless you.